like to talk to you about the key to digital transformation. And I'm going to pose four questions. The first, what is digital transformation? The second, how can people embrace it? Thirdly, how does culture support digital transformation? Finally, what is the role of the leader in digital transformation? At Lumina Learning, we have our own unique, humanistic, people-orientated lens. So the answer to those four questions, from my perspective, is as follows. In terms of what a digital transformation is, it's all about embracing new technology, but you do that through a culture shift. And how can people embrace it? Well, actually, they need to understand their unique strengths, their limitations, and I have a unique technology that I'm going to share with you on a really good way to do that. In terms of the relationship with culture, actually, in order to achieve digital transformation, there needs to be a balance between openness and a focus on execution. I'm going to show you how we can do that. And finally, the role of the leader. It's as simple as the leader shapes the culture, and they do that through role modeling the transformation that is required. I'd like to share a personal example. I've been engaged in psychometrics, either creating them, making them digital, or using them uh, as I go further back in uh, my career. If we take ourselves back 20 years ago, I don't know if you've ever filled in any psychometrics, but if you did it 20 years ago, it was often a pencil and paper exercise. And the first stage in going digital, uh, which is sort of uh, 10 to 20 years ago, was to automate away the paper and pencil process. That achieved some benefit, but didn't really take psychometrics in, into a truly digital era, because often they were then printed out at the end of the day on paper. Um, so to make things truly scalable, we need to move our psychometrics into a truly digital experience. And that's something I'll be sharing with you in a moment as well. If we do both of those things, the real opportunity is to create new products, maybe embed artificial intelligence into psychometrics so that the applications speak to you and talk to you about your personality and who you are. Now, John Boyd's dictum was people, ideas, technology, in that order. And often with digital transformation, we get it the wrong way around. We think that technology should come first, and that's why sometimes things fail. In fact, a recent Forbes article suggested that the failure rate could be as high as 84%. We can debate the numbers, but if any other uh, production process in an organization had, had that failure rate, we'd be deeply concerned and crawling all over it um, immediately. So there are a number of reasons why people fail in transformation, but I'm going to suggest it's as straightforward as getting it the wrong way around, putting technology first, focusing on the digital aspects and not looking at the people and the culture. Is going digital moving to the cloud? No, it's not. Is it investing in IT? Uh, no, I'm afraid it's not. It is, in fact, achieving a culture shift so that your people in the organization can embrace the new technologies. That also means your people need to be learning and open to learning new technologies. I'd like to give you a demo of one piece of technology to help you do this. So this is the um, Lumina Splash app, and here you can see the underlying preferences of one of my colleagues. At the top here is the openness needed for digital transformation. At the bottom is the discipline and the focus. On the right is the extroversion, the left is the introversion. And you can see this colorful splash is a nice organic way of describing who they are. So now this expresses their preferences, how they like to behave. They're quite balanced between extroversion and introversion. And they like to have ideas, but be quite sensible. But if we look at how they behave every day, we'll look at a different persona. We'll see here, actually, their introversion shrinks, they become more extroverted. And their down-to-earth, their practical side gives way in favor of ideas and vision. But the interesting thing is, where do they go under pressure? Let's have a look at the third persona, they're overextended. They become very focused on pleasing people, uh, being accommodating, maybe too accommodating, and their ideas can get a little bit carried away. And if all else fails, down the bottom with their discipline, they'll focus on putting on the blinkers and getting the job done. So you can get a feel for the dynamic in their personality. They don't really have one personality. There's a shift between all three of these personas. Then, of course, we can have a look at a gallery of many people here and look at teams too. So that's a quick overview of the technology used when we go truly digital 
in the world of psychometrics. Now here's my colleague uh, Jane Shooty. If we have a look at Jane, in her everyday, when she's more focused on engaging with clients, this would be her everyday persona. If we have a look at her underlying, a little bit more chilled and people focused. And of course, Jane can overextend uh, and may look something like this. So this is a useful way of looking at the individual. It's also a useful way of looking at what happens to teams in these three different personas. And of course you can build it up to the culture level to look at what that means for an entire organisation. By way of example, this is the Lumina Learning Team 10 years ago when the organisation was founded. And you can see there was a reasonable degree of balance in our underlying persona. There are a few sensible, practical people in the team and a few people like myself leading in the good ideas department, but an overall, average overall focus on the outcome. But when we move to the everyday, the, the centre of gravity headed north to being really open and inspired, which was pretty helpful in those early days. And of course we could overextend and we did that in a similar way too. Wind the clock on, 10 years, and we find a different picture. We've recruited more software developers, psychologists and so on, with more focus on discipline, structure, being sensible, down to earth and focusing on the outcome. And the, the centre of gravity has shifted. And if we move from the underlying to the everyday, we can see it's moved from outcome into discipline, the opposite of what it was 10 years ago. Put us under pressure, look at how we overextend, and we pretty much stay in the discipline-driven area, put the blinkers on and get stuff done. Here's another example from uh, one of our clients, NG Bailey, a highly successful engineering company from the north of England. Interestingly, they knew in their digital transformation that they needed to focus not just on the technology, although they're a technology business, but also on the people and their culture. Uh, the RDNA framework that they created had a beautiful equal balance on both the technical competencies and the behaviours required to support the ideal culture. A perfect example of how to do it. I think I've made the case that having a good digital transformation is not really about the cloud or, or just investing in IT. It is, of course, a culture shift that enables staff to take advantage of the new technology. And if I was to express that um, in terms of leadership, it's the role of the leader to shape the culture and put the focus on the people through role modeling the ideal behaviors. And then at the individual level, we need to help the individual understand their strengths, who they are underneath, how they behave, what they do under pressure, so that they can truly embrace and learn the technologies required. Putting this onto the Lumina Mandala and following Boyd's dictum, we're gonna start in the top left. People first, put people first. This is the way to create digital transformation. We're going to move over to the top right. We need ideas and we need learning and a culture of learning if we want to transform digitally. And in the bottom left, with all the blue, the down to earth, this is where we have a strong focus on being curious about new technology, which is also critical for these transformations. But if we do all of that without the bottom right red bit, we don't get stuff done, we don't execute. Remember, openness at the top, execution at the bottom. So with the red, we need to bring a focus onto delivery. Well, I'm hoping I've made the case. I'm hoping I've answered the four questions I posed at the beginning. What is digital transformation? Well, it is indeed embracing the opportunities of new technology through understanding and shifting the culture. How can we embrace it? It is, of course, through things like at the Splash app to help people know their strengths and to help teams know their strengths. If we move on to the culture, of course we need to balance openness and execution. And finally, the role of the leader is to fully understand that, to role model it and shape the culture and role model what's required for a digital transformation.